Hey everybody, welcome back to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and here on my YouTube channel in this video, I'm gonna show you a quick little tip to salvaging a recorded piece of audio that um, has clipping and instead of having to replay and or uh, scrap or deal with the poor, poorly recorded performance, here's a way to, to kind of fix it and salvage it. So before we get started, if you like what you see in this video, hit that subscribe button. Also, if this is your first time here, go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and get your free mixing course. It's right on the homepage. You can't miss it. It's worth a hundred bucks. It's my gift to you just for visiting homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I'm going to give you something else for free. So here we are in studio one. Again, this can be done in any DAW. So I have this track here, this kind of grand piano performance that was part of a full session that a client sent me. And I noticed when I was starting to mix the project that the, the piano was distorting, it was clipping. Let me give you kind of a, a listen here. So listen to this part right here, where it gets a little heavy handed. I'm gonna lead up to it, here we go. So you can hear it all through there. You can hear little bits of digital distortion. <clears throat> and then when they get a little heavy handed here, you could really hear it. I'll turn it up a little bit more so you can hear this a little bit better. Listen to as they get to the lower notes. Right there. It was happening all the way through, but you can hear it right there. Same thing at the end of the song, at the end of the track here. Listen to this. Right there. Ooh. Right? So how do you fix that? Well, some people think you could just come up here and you could just take clip gain and turn it down and that's gonna fix the problem. That doesn't fix the problem. Once the digital clipping is built, baked into the audio, you're, you're kind of screwed. So this was part of a, a full mix for a client and the piano player on the record um, wasn't the person that I was dealing with as far as mixing the song and they had no access to getting the, the part re-recorded. Ultimately, you'd want to re-record that part if you can because there's so much digital clipping in there. We didn't have access to that. So there's a couple things you can do. One thing you can do is you can use a, a plugin by Isotope called um, RX-8, which is like an audio repair tool which I did on this and it didn't work. It was so much clipping in here, it didn't work. And I used the D-clip and some other different tools and it didn't get rid of it. It, it, it. it helped it a little bit, but it didn't get rid of it. So I said, well, what are we gonna do here? This is a main part in the mix and I could bury it in the mix, but you really need to hear the piano. So here's something that you can try, okay? So you need Melodyne for this. Doesn't matter what DAW you need, but you need Melodyne. So let's say we wanna fix this part. We're gonna convert this to MIDI and then we're gonna use TuneTrack's easy keys to replace, to play the MIDI data and use the grand piano sound and then export that as an audio file. Let me show you. So first thing you wanna do is come over here and just left click on the event so it's highlighted. We wanna right click and we wanna say, uh, edit with Melodyne. And Melodyne is gonna open up and it's gonna detect it. Oh, what happened here? Get rid of that. Okay, there we go. Polyphonic detection. Okay, so it's 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 uh it's detecting it, and here's all the notes that it detected. So let me uh get all the notes on the screen here, all the different parts. There's three sections to this. So here's all the notes. So first thing we want to do once we've got it detected, is we want to come up to edit and go select all. So we're selecting all the notes. And then what I like to do is come over here and fix the pitch center in the pitch drift if there was any. Just gonna put that to hundred percent. Okay, then I'm gonna hit okay. Now, once I've done that, I'm gonna close Melodyne. We don't need that right now. And you'll see on the track that we have our mini notes, right? So now what am I gonna do? I'm gonna create an instrument track and I'm gonna use easy keys, or you can use any VST that has the piano. We're using a grand piano, but I'm gonna use easy keys because I have it and I like the way it sounds. So we're gonna go easy, bass, easy keys right here. I'm gonna drag this on here. Okay, and we want our grand piano sound. 
And again, we'll, we'll start with that. We can always add reverb and stuff to it after, but we'll close that for now. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take, highlight the track that we had melodined. I'm just going to left click and I'm just gonna drag it down. And look at that. How about that, right? Pretty clever. Now, if I just solo this up and play back easy keys. Gotta make sure our tempo was the, make sure the tempo, forgot to tell you, you wanna make sure the tempo is the tempo of the original file, which happened to be 137 beats per minute, so. No distortion, no clipping. Here's where it came up, right here. All distortion's gone away. Now, the one thing you have to do, like I said, you wanna make sure your tempo is set to the tempo of the audio file. I failed to do that, that's why I showed you that, and you'll see it's exactly the same, it's completely lined up. But what you wanna do is you're gonna double click on this, you're gonna look at the MIDI performance, you need to listen. Because depending on the source, some of the notes might be may come up a little short, they may be cut off a little sooner, and you wanna make sure, like for example, right there. So I can drag that note out. I can drag this note out so it sustains more. Even on the um, even on the last part where it was really heavy handed, remember down here? Back it up a little. So again, right there, no clipping, which is great, but you want to extend some of these notes. Like right here. So same thing, we want to extend that note. So you have to go in and you may have to do a little bit of editing, may have to go to do a little editing. But now you don't have any clipping anymore. And then we can close this. Now, once we get our track edited and we like the way it sounds and we're happy with the performance, now you could transform this to audio or you can leave it MIDI if you want to, but I needed to take this and bring it into another project and I wanted it to be an audio file. So how do you do that? So again, you just highlight the MIDI event here. You come up in Studio One, you come up to track and go to transform and we're gonna transform it to audio. Now you're gonna get a dialogue box where you can, um, you can render any inserts, you can preserve the instrument track if you want, you can remove the instrument, you want the auto tail uh, checked here so you get the reverb, any reverb tails. So you, depending on your situation, you can check or keep these unchecked. We're gonna keep these unchecked because all I wanna do is I just wanna make it audio. I could even remove the instrument after it's done. So here we go, hit okay. And it'll take a few seconds here. And now we have an audio track. And again, if we play that back, Go back to where it was distorting. So that's how you do it. So once again, you need to go in and edit and maybe drag some of the notes in the MIDI edit screen as I showed you. That needed to be finessed a little bit more, but it's very, very close just the way it is. Melodyne does a really good job. And the bottom line is now we have an audio file that there's no clipping in there. And that's a great way to do it. And you could do this on anything. You can do this on, you know, uh, you know, bass might be another, it depends on the instrument. Uh, bass would be really good as well. Um, you can do this on just about any instrument um, that has digital clipping where you're session was recorded or your tracks were recorded too hot and it was clipping. Again, you can use some audio restoration tools like Isotope RX-8, which is probably the best on the market. But I ran this audio file through that probably three different times to try to get rid of some of that clipping. And although I was able to get rid of probably 50 or 60% of it, because the original file had so much digital clipping in it, 
couldn't, I still couldn't use it and we didn't have access to the piano player. So I came up with this little solution here and it worked just fine. We put it back in the track and nobody was the wiser. So I hope you found this little tip or trick helpful. You won't use it all the time, but when you have a problem like this, it'll be something that'll hopefully get you out of a jam. So I want to thank you so much for taking the time and sticking around and watching the video. So as I said in the beginning of the video, you need to go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. You get yourself your free mixing course. It's $100, absolutely free. It's 90 minutes long. If you're a beginner or an intermediate and you need some mixing help, no better course, absolutely free. If you dig my style of teaching and you want to check out my more full length, more in-depth training courses, and I have everything from beginners to intermediates to advanced, recording, mixing, mastering, EQ compression, parallel compression, and so much more, and you want to check out one of those other courses, I want to give you a discount you can use the coupon code YouTube25, that is YouTube25, put that in at checkout, it'll take 25% off any other course on my website. Again, all the information and links will be in the description box below. So once again, thank you so much for watching this video. I've been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.